now that we have trained a model on contrastive learning, we can actually see what can we do with it and how well does it find you now on our small label data sets. Because for now, we cannot use that model just out of the box to classify. We need our labeled examples that we had before, these 500 images per class that we now want to uh, fine tune our model on. Uh, the first part that we do here is logistic regression, meaning that we keep actually our network fixed. So if we look uh, up here again in our representation, this F will be frozen and this G will be thrown away or rather replaced by a single linear layer. So we take our representation here, apply a single linear layer to um, get it from H to a classification. Therefore, this is very simple to train, uh, but we also see here our model in this logistic regression consists of a single linear layer. Um, therefore, so the loss gauge relation is really just taking this feature vector, applying our model on it and the standard contrast of learning. So you see that with the training, this logistic regression is very efficient and cheap because we do nothing else than training this single linear layer. Plus, we will also not really overfit much because we have only very few parameters to train. That's kind of a benefit of if this network F is actually already very good for our task, then uh, we have a very efficient time of fine tuning it. Let's do that on our SDL10 data set. So we now take the label part, the label train and test set, and try to just use this logistic regression on our trained simply model. To do that, what we first have to do is we have to prepare the features that I will start down here already. So what it basically does is it takes our model, our fixed confnet up here. Um, we remove the, the uh, projection head G and then we run all of our data through this model and just append it into a new data set down here. Why do we do that? Well, in every forward pass, we don't have to run again the confnet, right? Because we said it is frozen. Therefore, it's more efficient to just take all your data, run it once through the confnet and save these feature vectors, which represent our age up here. Let's go up here again. So we basically, now for all of our data, we don't apply any augmentation. We directly go through F get this representation out and put it into a data set on which we now train a single linear layer to classify it with our labels. So let's do that down here. Um, and to actually more get more insights, so 500 images per label is already not much, but what if we have even less data? So what if we have only 50 or 100 images per class? And that we will also simulate here to now see how efficient this model can become uh, if we have very little data. So if we use train a ResNet once and some scratch on what we have here, 10 uh, images per label, we will probably not go anywhere and just overfit on the data. Now that we have done that, let's check actually the plot. And we can already see with as little as 10 images per label. So really we just give it 10 images per class for our 10 classes we achieve already 63% accuracy on our test data set. That is quite impressive because we have very little data and our model has been only pretend on unlabeled data. So in its whole training progress from scratch, it only has seen then uh, overall 100 labels. And with that to already generalize quite well on more data is quite impressive. And this is also one big benefit of this self-supervised learning, that it can just find you very quickly and on very little data. And you see, of course, the more data we have, the better the results get. And even with the 500 images here, we achieve 81% accuracy, which is a strong performance on the SDL10 data set. That's, of course, for us now, okay, we see more data helps, but also very little data works as well. But 500 images per label, okay, that might still be reasonable to train a ResNet on. So how about we also try to train a ResNet 
to have a comparison to what this accuracy would look like if we don't have any unlabeled data or we don't uh, make any use of it. So what we have here is basically the same as before. We have a ResNet as our model and we do nothing else than take our training data set, our few labeled images and try to train this ResNet from scratch. So we don't use any pre-training. So the pre-trained here is set false and we just see how well does, it, does this one perform if we train it on our previous uh, training data set. One difference that we do here is, first of all, we apply augmentations. So it's obvious that without any augmentations, this network will directly overfit and have likely no chance of getting anywhere because the ResNet has more than 1000 times more parameters than we have actually data points. In comparison, when we had before on our logistic regression, we just had a single linear layer that we actually learned during the progress of the label data set meaning that there was no big uh, issue of overfitting. So now let's uh, train the model even with this regularization and check what training and test accuracy this one gets out. So what we would expect is that the training accuracy is of course close to 100% because it is very easy to uh, learn these 500 images per class. But what is the test accuracy? We can now also compare with the text accuracy of a ResNet trained on Scratch compared to where, uh, how many data samples the SimClear network would have needed to actually reach that accuracy. And the results here show that it gets, of course, on the training set as expected, 99.8% accuracy, while on the test set it only has 73%. Let's check with our uh, contrast of learning part, and there we see that. Uh, already with 10 times less data, our contrastive learning was better than the ResNet trained from scratch with uh, the full training data set. So this really shows you that even with a lot of regularization, with a lot of augmentation, you will not be able to achieve the same performance as uh, contrastive learning or self-supervised learning with a well uh, regularized uh, model from scratch. This also underlines that these results are quite impressive um, and we have kind of a baseline from here. So our contrastive learning model gets almost 10% better accuracy just by using all this unlabeled data. This brings us then also already to the conclusion. So we hope that this introduction example to self-supervised learning gave you an idea of what the potential is of using uh, with techniques. Of course, simply is not the only one uh, that is out there and there are a lot of improvements by now, a lot of different techniques that uh, take contrast of learning from different perspectives or in general just self-supervised learning. Um, one issue of simply is for instance that you need the negative examples, meaning that the batch size can really influence your results. While there are also then um, approaches like bootstrap your own latents that get around uh, this constraint and can be even more efficient to train. Um, therefore, for this tutorial, we, we close with SimClear, but we'll encourage you, if you're interested, there are a lot of uh, follow-up work, a lot of more to explore in the self-supervised domain that is potentially also a next step for convolutional architectures and just pre-training in general.